we have here Alex Lotman, who is an environmental expert for the Estonian Fund for Nature. He's a biologist, conservationist, and green thinker. So he has been one of the founders of Estonian Green Party and was uh, in that party also in the Estonian parliament a while ago. And our other panelist is uh, Samsa Kijanma, who's a program coordinator for the WWF in Finland uh, and uh, worked mainly on pulp and paper to palm oil issue, soy, bioenergy, and working towards moving Finnish markets to sustainable experience. And uh, with the discussion, we hope to think about susti sustainable, sustainable food production and environment. So, d would you like to stand or sit down? Sit down. Okay, yeah. No difference with me. <laughs> so, as a first question, uh, well, it might be provocative. Right? We've seen a number of models here today presented us on the screen, and I do get the feeling that there are uh, too many members in the equation of people, food, and the environment. So it seems that it's not possible to make all things balanced out that every, everyone has had enough food, has had healthy food, and it's all good for the environment as well. Is, is that an utopia to have such a balance? Alex? No, it isn't. Uh, at least uh, looking at how much food is wasted, for example. Uh, I think that uh, the lamenting that we need to increase uh, food production, uh, as some people are now talking uh, in the frame of the new uh, common agricultural policy, that we ne need to use the taxpayer money in order to feed the world, uh, is actually rubbish, uh, because uh, uh, you have to look uh, at how much is wasted, and then you see that that's uh, uh, not the main issue uh, why people go hungry. People are hungry not because there is not enough food produced. Uh, there are different reasons for, for, for that. Uh, and, uh, and actually, uh, when, when we start to look for solutions, we must remember that we are not only cons consumers, but we're also citizens. Uh, because if we look at the few big environmental successes that have happened during our lifetimes, uh, like uh, uh, cutting in uh, ozone uh, uh, layer uh, destroying substances, or combating acid rain, it has changed because people were active as citizens and have inflicted policy change, not so much because people were conscious consumers. Sapsa. Yeah, I, I would agree that it's uh, not a an utopia. And uh, uh, in addition to food waste, there's also overconsumption of food. For example, in uh, northern countries, the meat, meat consumption is, is way too high. And uh, by reducing the meat consumption and dairy consumption in, in northern countries, we could balance out, balance out so that the southern countries could increase their consumption and, and still everybody would be fed. So does it come down to awareness? So are, are people just not aware of what they should do and how they should behave? I would agree that not. Uh, awareness and uh, acting or acting on, on facts or, or something else is completely different. And I think it comes back to values and how, what pe people value. Uh, instead of facts, uh, the how, how people, how active they are on different issues is, is based on how much, what kind of values they um, prioritize. Is it uh, so-called hard values or um, uh, do they prioritize to get approval from from others by uh, building wealth and social status, or do they prioritize those values that um, 
are kind of fulfilling in, in, in themselves, being in nature, being with friends or, or caring for others. And, um, and how we, you know, how, what, what you prioritize depends on what you have been encouraged to do. And at the moment, people are encouraged to, uh, you know, compete and, and build, uh, increase their wealth instead of um, making better choices for, for others and environment. Alex. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree that uh, in modern society, competition is overrated. Uh, you have to compete for uh, the label of being most competitive. Uh, uh, and it's a sort of idol in itself. And, uh, and it's, it's a bit funny because uh, competition is with us anyway. It's part of life and, uh, and you shouldn't uh, uh, value that that much. Uh, it, it doesn't go away anywhere. Uh, so valuing more uh, cooperation than competition and uh, ethical values, including land ethic values, of course, uh, would help. Uh, and yes, of course, uh, when I said that it is more important to be citizen, uh, I, I didn't say that it isn't important that how you behave as a consumer. Uh, first and foremost, actually, because uh, there must be some integrity in your behavior. Uh, you are not uh, uh, not uh, trustworthy as an activist if you yourself as a consumer behave in a completely different way. And that is more important probably than the direct impact of your own consumption. Uh, but, but yes, uh, definitely we do consume more meat and more dairy products in, in rich countries and including in relatively poor rich countries like Estonia and other Eastern European countries are. The relatively poor rich countries, that's what, what we are. Uh, uh, and uh, in, in uh, rich countries, including relatively poor rich countries, we definitely consume too much uh, meat and too much uh, dairy products. But uh, I would not advocate for veganism or even for vegetarianism. Uh, I think that uh, some level of consumption uh, of these products is... Um, is uh, both necessary from the health perspective, we are omnivorous animals, uh, and, and, uh, and actually in accord with, with environmental, uh, uh, with sound environment. Uh, we have had mixed agriculture here for thousands of years and animal manure has been part of the basis of soil fertility. The issue is that in order to produce as much meat as is said to be good for us by powerful market players and, and also by policy, policy makers, in order to produce that much meat, you have to use a lot of human food uh, to feed the animals and a lot of land to grow feed that could be used to, to grow food. And, and that is something that needs to be stopped. And of course, as consumers, we must contribute to stopping that. But even it is more important that policy shift uh, happens. and. Uh, 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 agriculture, differently from what most people believe, in neither in Europe nor in North America, uh, is a market-driven uh, thing. It is very much policy-driven. Uh, common agricultural policy is the biggest money user, and I would say money waster, in 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 EU uh, in EU uh, uh, common budget, and and. Uh, uh, actually, the same level of subsidies is in in United States of America, even though most people, including most Americans, don't know that. Uh, more people know how much is paid in, in EU to, to farmers. Uh, and it is said that this money that is in the common agricultural policy is necessary to sustain our European uh, what is called European farming model, or now it's uh, it is. Uh, necessary for sustainable food production, it is said. It is said that it is uh, necessary for green growth, uh, for food security, all the nice catchwords. But if you look into what this money actually does, it's mostly undermining all those things. There is a relatively small fraction of smart money in, in, in EU common agricultural policy, mostly associated with what is called second pillar of the common agricultural policy, that can, that can and actually is used for public good. But most of this money is dumping public money uh, 
in order to increase use of fertilizers and pesticides uh, that end up polluting the environment. I would actually argue that, uh, yes, correctly, that it, it's a EU is a policy-driven institution, uh, but how much uh, is this policy locked into the market lo logic? Uh, you know, state, state logic is to uh, environment is not called environment, it's called natural resources that you can exploit to create jobs and, and uh, tax revenue. And, uh, and so companies need to, companies and people need to uh, live within these frames of, 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 of thinking. And um, so uh, if, if the policy is locked into this green growth or whatever color growth, uh, so who can make the who can make the biggest biggest difference or rapid change in the food production? Thomas mentioned that uh, the time frame for biodiversity loss is 25 years. Uh, for climate change, it's 2050 is the year. And if we want to make it on climate change, so we need to get the global emissions down. Uh, continuous decline in within three years' time. I think we are already late on biodiversity. So who can make this rapid change? Uh, and I believe it's not the consumers. Uh, it's n I cannot make it. I, it. How many consumers is there? I think well, five billion yeah. in the <laughs> world. So, you know, spread awareness to these consumers. I think it's hopeless. And uh, so, but there are players who can who are also customers, but they are business-to-business -business customers. They are big corporations who, who can uh, um, ask for sustainable commodities and, and kind of direct the agricultural practices to more sustainable and responsible way. And at the same time, make it possible for customers to buy sustainable food. It should actually be default to an easy to buy the sustainable food and not the unsustainable one. So I think that's, that's the where we should be heading and very fast. And this is, um, you know, what kind of information would be needed uh, to, to shift diets or, or agriculture. It's not so much what to do, but how to do it and fast. Okay, and of course, you're all invited also to join the discussion. So whenever you have a comment or question, just uh, raise your arm and let us, uh, let us know. Anyone so far? So, so what you're saying, with the big issues, it, it cannot come bottom up. It, it has to be some sort of a top-down mm. approach. No, 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 no. 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 Uh, because we have, a, we have a time frame, very short time frame. If we want to have a livable planet, so we need to make rapid changes in how businesses are doing business. But I think the ultimate or the ultimate change has to come from bottom up because uh, people are still kind of more free to make choices on you know based on their own values what they actually value is it nature or, or is it money and i think the ultimate change comes from people starting to think what they actually value in life and uh, and uh, start to take steps to act on those values yeah, in a in a way, it uh, has to come bottom up, but not uh, not from us, not only from us as consumers. Again, I'm not uh, uh, um, uh, I'm not uh, uh, saying that uh, that our behavior as consumers I is not important. It is important, but it is more important how we behave as citizens to put pressure on 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 the policymakers uh, uh, and on big companies, of course, also. But again, if you look wherever there has been any success, major success, in, in, uh, in environmental issues, it has been when citizens have put enough pressure on decision makers. And then decision makers have made some decisions. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, uh, big companies count, and, and, and we as consumers also count. But, uh, but uh, we as citizens, uh, uh, the, what we do as citizens is more important. So, but, so but these things can't be a split because, again, we are uh, we and active citizens are not uh, trustable if they behave as consumers in completely opposite way. 
So why aren't we putting this uh, pressure on the on the policymakers or ourselves are, as consumers? Why aren't we protesting <coughs> that we cannot uh, choose the ketchup in the supermarket? I would argue that it's not normal. It's not encouraged. It's encouraged to go to work and earn a lot of money and pay taxes, not to uh, protest the, the decision makers. And uh, people want to fit in. And if it's normal that people uh, behave in certain ways, so they want to do the, do the same thing. And this is also why it's so important to have a easy, you know, sustainable food products. Should be, it should be easy to have access to them. So, uh, and normal. So if you want to influence people's uh, consuming ha habits, you should um, try to show that it's uh, normal to make environmentally friendly uh, uh, consumer choices, and it's actually you're kind of cool if you make it. So you have to have this kind of uh, uh, eco eco idols, so that people can associate and, and feel feel normal in doing doing the good thing. Yes. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> I would like to remind you where we are just now. We are in a meeting that is uh, funded by European Union. <laughs> And uh, that's why we are here now. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uh, work we are just doing here is just for decision makers. Mm -hmm. And we need decisions, we need regulations, we need recommendations, we need harmonization. That's it, what, what we are just now doing. Mm -hmm. And awareness uh, will help, uh, if I'm, I, it will help big industries, consumers, everywhere, to understand where we are just now going to and where the direction is. But uh, I think that after this project is, project is ready or before, even before that, there will happen something uh, together in the European Union. And I, 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 that's my hope for the future. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. Awareness is, is important, but I'm also quite certain that decision makers are aware of severity of climate change, but there's no action. Well, uh, for climate, definitely there is not enough action. Uh, so it can be almost said that there is no action. Of course, there is some action, but, but given the urgency of the matter. Uh, but again, uh, where, where we find any progress, talking of climate change, of major players, there is some very limited progress in EU because EU, has, uh, EU citizens have pushed EU decision makers to adopt some policy decisions. There is almost no progress in the United States, even though there are quite enough of concerned citizens, but not enough to push the, the government in, into adopting serious policies. Uh, uh, so, um, citizens are very important, as consumers also, but uh, in order to achieve major breakthrough, you need policy change. Of course, with, there is one good thing with, with consumer behavior, that usually, well not always, sometimes there is no choice, but when there is choice, you can do something immediately and be not so frustrated. You go and buy organic food instead of something else if, if you have enough money to pay for organic food that tends to be more expensive. Uh, while uh, to uh, push politicians, you have to work years on it and get very frustrated because nothing happens. Uh, um, uh, so, of course, uh, there are some uh, bene uh, benefits uh, of uh, acting as consumer. Uh, you can do, usually you can do something immediately. But sometimes, of course, you are locked into a situation where you can't do because you are not offered any choice. Uh, m uh, but but uh, these, st and these steps are necessary. Whenever you, you can do it, you have to do it. But, but these steps are far too small. Uh, and um, uh, but, but again, one, uh, why things are where they are in common ag agricultural policy? Basically, at least partly, 
because this policy is so bloody complicated that hardly anyone understands it, including those people who are supposed to and be deciding on it, uh, members of European Parliament, for example, or members of national parliaments. Uh, the regulations are so complicated that hardly anyone has read them all, uh, and, uh, but these will become decisive uh, on our next period. Uh, but there are some quite simple issues, for example, that majority of the, of the uh, budget of the common agricultural policy for next period, that is 70% uh, uh, of 75%, that is more or less roughly half, uh, is in the so-called basic payment. Payment that has no object objective whatsoever uh, that has been, European Court of Auditors has pointed it out that uh, about half of uh, CAP budget for the next period is allocated to the payment that has no objective. Uh, and uh, this payment clearly is environmentally negative payment because the more there is money in it, the more uh, uh, agrochemicals are used. Uh, and. Uh, it has the only thing it has attached to it is uh, so-called cross-compliance, that is basically legi legislative baseline and so-called good agricultural and environmental condition that is so vague that... Um, uh, so it is that the bulk of the payment is where there is no public benefit and there is very sh big shortage of money where there is public benefit, like agri-environmental payments that are part of the common policy that could drive agriculture towards the production modes that are sustainable. So there are things that we can approach on the global or European level. There are definitely things that we can approach on the national level, but do we have enough uh, attention maybe on the regional level? Because we, we, as we've shown here, the project also deals with, with the Baltic Sea region, all the coastal areas, which clearly are affected by the same, uh, uh, same uh, forces, same fields, uh, same pressures. And well, to that uh, respect, also need to be addressed similarly. So, which would need some kind of regional approach. How much do we have of of this? There has been idea, for example, to have a one regional agri-environmental measure, uh, sub-measure among among me measures for the next planning period. But this far as it has never been finally dropped. It has simply not been picked up very much anymore in recent days so I have not uh, there have been half a year ago there have been a lot of discussions that maybe we should adopt uh, in for the Baltic region uh, for the next period of uh, rural development planning and agri-environment uh, sort of one sub-measure that is same for all of us because the problems are similar we have same sea uh, but um, uh, there is not much progress on, on that nowadays anymore. Of course, there is a lot of networking between people who are working on, on the, on the agri-environmental measures for next period, informally. So there is some coordination. But um, on regional level, I think uh, in my work, I, I concentrate on uh, trying to influence the big companies that uh, trade commodities and try to shift their uh, sourcing to more responsible uh, manners. And uh, there's a big difference between countries uh, on this, uh, how, how progressive or active the companies are. Uh, in many EU member states, uh, for example in, in Sweden, uh, the companies are very eager to listen to civic society and, and, and the concerns that are raised. Um, and they even, uh, you know, without WWF calling them, they call to WWF on uh, asking how they can minimize this and this environmental impact in their in the, uh, the production. And on the other hand, there's uh, member states like Finland where the companies are very uh, conservative and uh, still mix the sustainable practices with, with the minimum requirements by legislation and, uh, and are not, uh, you know, proactive at all and uh, are not used to discuss their own practices. And so there would be, uh, it would be good to 
disseminate information on, on what's, what's the logic behind this? Why, why companies are uh, acting, acting so differently? Is it just the culture or, or, or how, to, how to improve this proactiveness by companies? Okay. We have a comment here. I was just thinking about this division between consumers and citizens and I was thinking what's missing this producers or entrepreneurs mm -hmm. because uh, there was this uh, like like the Estonian food bank the what struck me there was that that it was basically two people who decided that hey we don't have one of these maybe we should have one of these and then it took two years and then they had mm -hmm. it, what they call a start up or kind of a initiative but I actually have like two questions one is that what do you think is the main limiting factor why don't we have like why don't we have one Estonian food bank and not 50 similar initiatives coming up all the time and the second question is that you can choose which one to answer <laughs> is that what kind of startups or initiatives would be needed these kind of grassroots initiatives in order to make a quick change? Well, mm -hmm. uh, uh, as for uh, Estonian situation, uh, it's, it, it's very simple and very complicated at the same time. Uh, as uh, any country that has uh, had to leap out of a completely closed uh, environment 20 years ago, we are in between of we are at the same time living in the uh, s same time with you today and uh, the time when uh, Finland was only 20 years independent <laughs> uh, you, you can't compare of course it isn't uh, just uh, it isn't uh, to say that we are living in the same place where we lived in 40s and Finland lived in 40s because then we had 20 years of independence. We, we all live in, in, in 2010s, but in some, uh, in some elements we are not in the same time. Uh, so, of course, it is uh, sometimes used as an excuse by politicians also that well allow us more time and blah 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 uh, but but to some extent it is true you you can't leapfrog over everything you, but you must try of course um, why aren't there so many initiatives uh, you know everybody can think think about it on the you know on day-to-day -day basis, how what what would it require for you to come up with a startup or an initiative? If you have a family and you have to earn money, and uh, then you would like to rest at some time, so there's certain limitation on on how active can you be. Uh, and what would be needed? Uh, I would argue that it would be interesting to. Break, break down the walls between these identities of producer, consumer and citizen and whatnot. And uh, uh, kind of have initiatives, at least in Finland there are several initiatives where regular people are producing food for themselves. Uh, groups of people have a small patch of field and uh, produce organic food for, for their own consumption and, and maybe even excess so that it could be distributed to, to local neighborhoods. And, uh, um, I think this would be. Well, nice. I think we have those people here in Estonia as well. They are called grandmothers usually. No, not no. Uh, no, no. Nowadays it's not that much grandmothers no, not that anymore. Much, nowadays it's quite a lot of young <coughs> people are doing mm -hmm. it. But again, it's uh, a, a, it is uh, something very nice, something that you can show use as a nice example, but not anything that you can uh, really hope that will break the trend, because the, uh, this will never uh, be big part of the food consumed throughout Estonia. It is, it is increasing quite quickly. A lot of youngsters join in, uh, growing, uh, you know, uh, having the urban gardens, etc. But uh, uh, the, there is no hope that this will replace the, the supermarket food. Uh, so it is still important how the supermarket food is produced. 
but of course it is important that uh, that these young people do these things because it represents a change in mentality and without change in mentality there will be also no policy changes i think it's a good, a good uh, kind of a bottom up uh, approach to changing changing the attitudes towards food and uh, that it's actually quite valuable and you have to do work to to earn it and uh, of course it's uh, difficult to compete against s group or prismas and and all with this but uh, but you you can actually do quite no, quite a big proportion of your vegetables on a on a small field. So oh yeah, well so I grow uh, my own. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but <So. laughs> uh, and I plow with with horses. But uh, <laughs> but that's uh, probably the only one, the only person in Estonia now. Uh, but uh, I don't hope that uh, it will inflict the change that everyone will sh shift to plowing with horses. Uh, but um, uh, you might get the impression that I was always, when I say that I, uh, when I'm talking about policy shift, uh, it of course sometimes implies more and better regulation. But I don't want to have you impression that I would always say that we need always more regulation. Actually, in some places, uh, some things are overregulated, misregulated, and the regulation is actually uh, killing uh, the small farms. Uh, for example, uh, this, there is an overall EU uh, regulation that some member states manage to look upon relatively flexible, but, n b but uh, uh, definitely uh, there is an overall regulation that you are not allowed to sell meat from animals slaughtered at home. And this is completely right as long as industrial so-called food chains are concerned. It is clear that uh, in order that uh, you can't uh, get into industrial sausages uh, meat from a lot of small farms that kill at home. But selling uh, directly to a customer or through a small farm shop should be legal. And it is, some, some member states manage to, to, uh, go, uh, to get through this maze of uh, EU regulation, but because there is some possibility of exemptions, but this rule, as a rule, is indeed stupid uh, for, sm for short food chains. Uh, when we are now talking a lot about uh, promoting food, food chains, these should be deregulated. But, of course, in these industrial food chains, you need this full regulation, because otherwise you can, you can lose completely the control over food safety issues. Okay, I'm afraid that's the time for Tiring. the discussion now. Thank you very much for our two panelists.